Hey TD Superheroes, I'm Alejandro Perez, your sidekick, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at Maya's command module. And this is a Python module in Maya that helps you interact with Maya's by creating objects, modifying objects. Basically it's a wrapper for Mel. Mel is Maya's embedded language and it basically lets you do everything that you want to be able to do inside of Maya and even more than what you can do in the default interface. So let's take a look at how we can figure out what type of commands we want to create. So if we create a polysphere, for example, you can see that it gives us these lines in the history here for our script editor. If you don't know where the script editor is, it's on the bottom right hand corner, this button here. That will open up your script editor. You can see the history and the script. If you don't see either, like I can clear it out right now. Let me select that and delete it. Then I can clear it again. If you only see the history, you might be in this mode. If you only see the script, you might be in this mode. If you want to see both, click on this button, you'll see both. So let's go back and create that polysphere. You can see what it creates for us. It has a polysphere and it has some flags with values to be able to decide what that default sphere looks like. Then it gives us a comment here that says create polysphere. So the command that we're looking for right here is what we would use to create the sphere and that is a mel command. So we want to be able to modify that to be a python version of that. So what we could do is copy that polysphere command, paste it here, and you can see that it gives us a blue or cyan highlighted polysphere. Let's double click on that to select it, right click, and we're going to go to command documentation. That should bring this up and it gives us basically a description of the command. Then it goes through and tells us all the different flags that we can modify. Here you can see on the right hand side whether the attribute or command is or flag like I've been calling it because in Mel they call it flags but in Python really there are arguments but you can see they have a C, Q, and E so that means that that argument can be used when it's creating the object if it has a C. You can use it to query the information from that object using the Q or you can edit it using the E. So for example the object right here you can only do that as a command. We haven't covered integer types yet but I wanted to kind of give you guys or not integer types but data types but I wanted to give you guys kind of an intro of the commands since we're going to be using this a lot in this series of videos. But we have boolean, linear, integer. Those are the different options for different flags. So on the axis, the way the axis is lined up, it can be used in create, query, or edit. So that gives us a lot to kind of go off of. Also, towards the bottom, we can see that there is an example script. So let's copy this script and then jump back to Maya. And I'm going to paste over what I just created there. So here, oh, I forgot the, the I. There we go. Here at the top, we can see that we're importing the Maya commands. So the module that we're using is maya.cmds and then we're renaming it to cmds because if not we would have to type out maya.cmds for each one of the commands but this could be anything that you want so what I like to do a lot in my code is do mc so if I were to do that I need to change all of these to mc anytime the cmds comes up 
I need to change it to MC. I'm just doing this as an example, but also because this is going to be kind of the standard shortcut that I use for the Maya.cmds module. Okay, so this imports the module and it gives us a shortcut for that module. Then we have the example here. So this section here is a what's called a comment. So anytime you see a pound symbol or a hashtag, whatever you want to call it, these lines are not read by the interpreter. They're just for anybody looking at the code to be able to understand it a little bit better. So over here it says it creates a sphere with 10 subdivisions and keeps on going on and explaining what this single line does. So I'm going to highlight this section and only run this section and push enter on the numeric keypad and it creates a sphere. There we go. So I'm going to clear it and then I'm going to run this line only just so that we can see them individually. This one has a much smaller diameter sphere. And then we'll run this one. So this is modifying the sphere. So we can see it's looking for my sphere. My sphere is called here and we're querying the value of the scale X. So when we do that, we won't see anything on the screen, but if we print that variable, which is R, run this again. You can see that it gives us the radius which is at 5 and or the scale x sorry and you can see that scale x here is 5 so it matches up with what we would be expecting for that particular sphere. Okay clearing the scene. So that is the commands with a whole bunch of different arguments attached to them but what you can test out is we have a polycube and let's build one from scratch. So here I'm going to say after we've imported Maya commands as MC, I'm going to say MC dot and then I'm going to copy that polycube since I know that's the command I want to use, polycube, and open close parentheses. So this is the minimum to be able to run this command. So if I select this and run it, you can see that I create a cube with the default settings. Anything that we go in and add after that inside of the parentheses is just modifying the default settings that you have. So if I go to the command documentation and I can look for something that I might want to modify, let's say the depth, we can copy this and it takes a number, that's what the linear value means. So I'm going to say depth equals, and then let's say, okay, so with the value of three there, let's highlight all this and run it. And you can see that it modified the cube to be more of a rectangular box. So we can update it with the values there. One other thing to take note is that when we go in and look at the command documentation here, we can see that on depth it has a value right next to it that is in parentheses. So that is the shorthand. So a lot of times you'll see people write in the shorthand. So D equals three. And I do it a lot too. When I try to do examples, I try to write the whole thing, but a lot of times I do use shortcuts. If you use the full name, it's kind of more Pythonic because it lets you be able to understand the code and read it easier, but using the shorthand is much faster as we can see here. So it created exactly the same cube if we change the depth to D and we can change the value and see that it still creates kind of the same thing with the updated value. So anything that you want to create or do inside of Maya, you can see that it will give you a command. So something to be careful of that not all of them translate one to one. So you can see I do a do delete. So if I were to try to do mc.do 
delete. You can see that it doesn't consider it a command because it's not highlighted in this cyan color. If you're going to delete, it would just be delete like this. So there is a little bit of variance from the mill, but 90% of everything you can actually find here. If you saw a command and you tried to do something like that and it didn't pop up, you can go to the Python command reference, open it up, and then here in the search, try to figure out what you want to do. Say, I want to delete. Start typing it here. It starts filtering it out. And you can see that it has all of these options here for deleting an object. And there's different kind of things. So like delete attribute and stuff. But the one we would need is delete. And then it gives us a description here so that we can see what it can do and some examples on the bottom, all of the different flags that we can use for it. So that is pretty helpful. And let's jump back over to Maya. And that is it for this lesson. That's an introduction to the Maya commands. I hope you found this useful. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.